All right, welcome back. So let's go ahead and talk about test benches. So a test bench is basically a structure that we use to apply inputs to a unit that we want to test. So I already have one of these written. This is called test1.v. It's another Verilog file. But part of what we have in this file is not going to actually produce hardware. It's being used to drive a simulation. So we have the usual time scale statement at the top. And we're defining a module called testbed. Testbed is basically a wrapper around the device we want to test. So I'm defining two inputs, which I'm calling registers, because I'm going to give them values. And we'll explain that a lot more later. And I have an output, which is just going to be a wire. So the big thing happening here is what we call instantiation. We're saying, I want to create a test one. Okay, test one is this, this AND gate that we designed in the previous video. Um, and we're saying I want to create an instance of test one. I'm going to call that instance U1. Doesn't really matter what I call it. It's just a placeholder. So I'm making an AND gate called U1. And I'm telling it how to connect my signals in this test bed module to the inputs and outputs of the AND gate. So the AND gate, remember it had an input called A and an input called B and an output X. I'm saying I want to connect input A to what I call IN1, which is this register. I want to connect the AND gate's B input to what I call IN2, which is another register. And I want to connect the AND gate's output, which is X, to a wire that I call OUT. So IN1, IN2, and OUT are things in this testbed module that I can manipulate. All right. Keyword initial says this is some stuff I want to do at the very beginning of the simulation. And begin and end mark off a block of code, which in this case is the initial code. OK, so what can we do in the simulation? We can say display, so dollar sign display, and we can put in a message. So this will print out hello in the beginning. And I'm going to ask it to take the results as it's simulating and write them to a file, in this case, test1.vcd. So I'm saying dump files test1.vcd that's the file it's going to write to and dollar sign dump var semicolon says go ahead and dump your variables into that dump file all right now there's there's really three things that are going to happen from here on out one we're going to specify periods of time we want to wait this number sign 10 says let the simulation run for 10 nanoseconds okay that's the first thing we're going to do is let some time pass second thing is we're going to make assignments two variables. So we have these two variables in one and in two. Remember they're connected to A and B on the AND gate. And here we're saying set in one equal to zero, set in two equal to zero. So we're waiting 10 nanoseconds in the beginning. We're zeroing out the two inputs of the AND gate. And then we're waiting another 10 nanoseconds. The third thing we're going to do is this display command. And this is just for the sake of simulation. When we run the simulation, this is going to display on our screen a string that looks like this. And this is formatted just like a printf statement in C. So this will print out IN1 equals and replace percent D with a value of IN1, same for IN2, and same for OUT. So this will show me while the simulation is running what the values of input and output are. Okay, But it's also dumping our variables into a file, test1.vcd. All right, so we just keep doing this. We wait 10 nanoseconds. We set input 1 to a 1, wait 10 nanoseconds, look at our output and input variables set in 2 to a 1, and so on and so forth. And we keep doing this, and then eventually we say dollar sign finish. That says we're done with the simulation. This is the end statement that matches the begin for the initial. And that's the end of our module. Okay, So this, this block of code, testbed, this is not an actual thing. Okay, This is just a gimmick that the simulator is using to let us drive inputs and look at outputs. It's not actually a piece of hardware we're going to synthesize. So Verilog has sort of two separate states of mind. There's a way we can define hardware, which will in some cases actually be synthesized into collections of gates and wires. But we can also use these things like display and dump file and so on to help us drive a simulation. So we're doing both of those here. Now down here at the bottom is our module test one again. We already did this in the previous video. And again, it's got three inputs, A, B, X. Um, they're all wires. And we're assigning X to be the output of an AND gate whose inputs are A and B. So that's test one. And we're creating an instance of it. 
connecting our signals to the A, B, and X inputs and outputs, and then just driving those inputs with these in one equals, in two equals type statements, and then looking at the output with this display statement. So let's go ahead and compile that. So we'll say iVerilog, we'll put the output in test one, and we'll say test one dot V, and if we do this, it will um, compile this code up, and it's using um, testbed as the top level module because it's not instantiated from anything else. So we should be all good to simulate now. So to simulate, we just say VVP and we use whatever the name was that we output, in this case just test1, and it goes ahead and runs a simulation. So it said hello, we asked it to do that. When we created a dump file and said dump the variables, it gave us a message saying that it opened this file for output. And here's the input output statements that it was that it was asked to display. So when both inputs were zero, x was zero. When our inputs were one zero, the output was zero. When our inputs were zero one, the output was zero. But when both inputs were one, the output was a one. So that's a really quick first order view of how the simulation ran. And we can see that it's, it's acting like an AND gate. So that's good, that's good progress there. The last thing we might want to do is actually look at the behavior of the input and output variables without having to use these display statements. So we can totally get rid of those, but we have a file that's been produced, this, this output file that we specified, which was um, test1 dot, um, test1 dot VCD. So to view that, we can say GTK, GTK wave test1.vcd and this opens a graphical viewer that we can use to look at waveforms. So we run that, we get a little splash screen. Here's our viewing window, let's maximize that. And here's the name of our top module, testbed. And if we click on testbed, we can see the signals that are part of testbed. If we click on U1, we'll see the signals that are part of U1. So there's a hierarchy here. Let's just click on testbed and let's drag our signals over to the signals window. So here's in one, in two, and out. And you can see the time scale here starts at zero and it goes over to about eight picoseconds. That's way too short because our simulation actually went to 90 nanoseconds. So this window over here, if we click on that, that'll maximize the window so we can see the entire 90 nanoseconds time period. And now you can see what's happening. For the first 10 nanoseconds, in one and in two had undefined values, that's why they're they're fuzzy like this. And then at 10 nanoseconds, they were set to zero and the output down here on the bottom was zero. At 30 nanoseconds, we raised input one, the output was still zero. At 50 nanoseconds, we also raised input two and now the output raised. And then at 70 nanoseconds, we dropped input one and the output went low again. So there's your, your uh, timing diagram of our AND gate subject to certain stimulation on its inputs. So that's kind of a complete start to finish, a uh, really quick overview of writing a Verilog module, making a test bench, compiling, simulating, and then bringing up the waveform. So future videos will get into um, details about Verilog itself. Um, the details of the language, conditional statements, and most importantly of all, um, defining behavioral Verilog, where we describe what we want a circuit to act like instead of describing the circuit in terms of gates and wires, we can describe high-level behavior. That's a totally separate talk, though. All right, hope this is helpful. Let me know. Thanks. Bye.